Dear learners, in the previous module, we have learnt about Python list. Let us recall that a list is a data structure in Python that is a mutable or changeable ordered sequence of elements. Each element or value that is inside of a list is called an item. Just as strings are defined as characters between quotes, lists are defined by having values between square brackets. Lists are very handy to use when you want to work with many related values. They enable you to keep data together that belongs together, condense your code and perform the same methods and operations on multiple values at once. In today's lesson, we will discuss tuple. Unlike a list, a tuple is a data structure that is an immutable or unchangeable ordered sequence of elements. Because tuples are immutable, their values cannot be modified. Tuples are also used for grouping data. Each element or value that is inside of a tuple is called an item. Tuples have values between parentheses separated by commas. Empty tuples will appear as shown in the figure. In this slide, we see the syntax for creating a tuple in Python. The first line segment is creating a tuple by the name vegetables. So, I write it as vegetables is equal to open parenthesis and close parenthesis without any elements inside the parenthesis. So, this is an empty tuple that we have created by the name vegetables. In the next line, we see we have created the same vegetables tuple, but this time we have an item by the name brinjal inside the tuple. Please note that even for a single element, you need to put that comma after that element as per the syntax. In the third line, you see that we are creating a tuple by the name fruits. Now, here we are going to have five elements in this tuple by the name, the elements are apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple. Then we try to print the elements of the tuple, just say print, pass the tuple fruits as an argument to the print function and you see the output that the output you get is apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple that is shown at the end of the figure. Can you think about some examples of four tuples? When thinking about Python tuples and other data structures that are types of collections, it is useful to consider all the different collections you have on your computer. Your collection of files, your song playlist, your browser bookmarks, your emails, the collection of videos you can access on a streaming service and many more. Tuples are similar to lists, but their values can't be modified. Because of this, when you use tuples in your code, you are telling others that you do not intend for changes to that sequence of values. Additionally, because the values do not change, your code can be optimized through the use of tuples in Python as the code will be slightly faster for tuples than for lists. Now, we come to the indexing of tuples. As an ordered sequence of elements, each element in a tuple can be accessed individually through indexing. Each element corresponds to the index number, which is an integer value starting with the index 0. Please look at the figure for indexing our example tuple for our for indexing of tuples. So, here you see that uh, I have explained about indexing of tuples, we have created earlier the fruits tuple and here 
in the top of the figure you can see how the tuple is actually organized. So, we have the indexing values starting from 0 which refers to apple, 1 for banana, 2 for cherry, 3 for plums and 4 for pineapple. Now, when I say print fruits of 2 within a square bracket, the output is cherry because the index 2 corresponds to cherry, the item cherry. Similarly, the indexing of tuples start from 0. So, fruits of 0 refer to apple, fruits of 1 refer to banana, fruits of 2 refer to cherry and so on. Now, when I try to, it is also possible in Python to access the elements of a tuple from the rear end that is from the reverse, from the end of the tuple. For example, here I want to refer to the element which is at the last. Okay. So, this type of uh, indexing is negative indexing is very much handy when we want to access elements especially in large tuples from the end. So, in this case Python automatically uh, indexes the values from the end. The last element is given an index of minus 1, the last but 1 is given minus 2 and so on. So, that is shown at the end of the figure. Now, when I try to print fruits of minus 2, the last but one element that is plums is printed as output. In addition to positive index numbers as we saw, we can also reach items from the tuple with a negative index number by counting backwards from the end of the tuple starting at minus 1. As I said, this is especially useful if you have a long tuple and we want to pinpoint an item towards the end of the tuple. Now, we get, get into the another operation of slicing the tuples. We can, we can use indexing to list out a few items from a tuple. Slices allows us to call multiple values by creating a range of index numbers separated by a colon. For example, within square bracket you put x colon y where x and y refer to indices. Let us now try, to try out to list out using different ways of slicing our fruits tuple. So, here we see that we ha I have put up a lot of examples about our which pertain to our fruits tuple. Now, here I am going to slice the fruits tuple. The first example you see I am going to print tuple from colon 1 colon 3. That is when I say 1 colon 3, I refer to the index values from 1 to 3. And here you see the output is the item banana is actually located at index value 1 and the cherry and cherry is located at index value 2. So, these two are printed. So, here I am going to slice the tuple from 1 to 3 index value 1 to 3 where I get banana which is at located at 1 and cherry which is located at 2. You see that the index values in the square brackets when I refer to them the first value is inclusive where the last value is not inclusive. So, you see that the item value which is located at 3 is not printed. Okay. So, we get only two values as output that is banana and cherry. Similarly, suppose I want to print starting from index value 1 all the remaining uh, elements of the of the uh, tuple then I simply say print from 1 colon. Okay. Then this colon refers to all elements that after the index value 1. Now, you see that the output you can see I get all the values banana, cherry, plums and pineapple. Similarly, when I print I want to print up to the third that is the uh, index all the elements which are located before the third index then I say print then within that tuple I have to put colon 3. Okay. So, it which includes all indexes before the element 3. Please observe that the element at 3 is not inclusive. Okay. Then I use negative indexing as I did before 
for slicing also. Now, I want to print the elements from the negative index minus 3 to minus 1. So, this also prints the elements as shown. Now, I want to print all the elements from the negative index minus 2, the, but that is the last but 2 of the uh, tuple and, the, re, and the, re, the rest of the elements, then you see I get the output as plums and pineapple. Now, let us get into what is a stride. Another parameter that we can use with slicing is called a stride which refers to how many items to move forward after the first item is retrieved from the tuple. So far, when we have omitted the stride parameter, the python defaults to the stride of 1, so that every item between 2 index number is retrieved. The syntax for this construction is the name of the tuple, the, angle, the square bracket with x colon y colon z where x and y are the indices and z is the stride with z referring to the stride. Let us make a larger list of numbers then uh, slice it and give the stride a value of 2. In slide in this figure you see that we are trying to slice with a stride. For this purpose, I have created a tuple by the name numbers. So, numbers equal to within parenthesis, I have given some 12 elements, 13 elements, 0 starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 12. Now, I want to print the elements of this uh, tuple numbers. So, I say print numbers 1 colon 11 that is I want to print from index value 1 to the index value 11, but with the stride of 2. Now, I give 1 colon 11 colon 2. Now, you find the output. So, what do you see in the output? What number is at index value 1? Yeah, of course, 1 is located at index value 1. So, starting from 1, it starts printing out the elements of the tuple, but now, you see it skips one element because I given a stride of 2. So, I get the output as 1, then 2 is skipped, then 3, then 5, 7 and 9. It does not go to the 11th because you see 11th uh, element when I say 1 colon 11, the 11th uh, index is actually a non-inclusive one. So, it prints up to 9. So, I get the output as 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I want to print the entire list. Okay. So, I do not mention the starting index nor the ending index. So, I say print numbers colon colon, but I give a stride value of 3. Now, you see when I do not give the starting index, the starting index of 0 is taken. So, by default, so 0 is the starting index and, and, and uh, the ending index is colon. That is also the last index that is in, in our case it is 12 and we have the output as 0. Now, you see once you print 0, now the stride is 3. So, now 2 elements have to be skipped. So, 1 and 2 are skipped, then after 0 we get 3. Then after 3, 4 and 5 are skipped and we get the next value as 6. After 6, 7, 8 are skipped and we get the value 9. And after 9, 10 and 11 are skipped and we get the last value 12. So, the output is 0, 3, 6, 9 and 12. So, this is all about stride. Now, we go to the next topic that is concatenating and multiplying tuples. Operators can be used to concatenate or multiply tuples. Concatenation is done with the plus operator and the multiplication is done with the star operator. The plus operator can be used to concatenate two or more tuples together. We can assign the values of the two existing tuples to a new tuple. The star operator can be used to multiply tuples. Perhaps 
you need to make copies of all the files you need in a directory onto a server or share a playlist with your friends. In these cases, you would need to multiply collections of data. Assuming you have two tuples, vegetables and fruits what we created before, let us watch the figure. So, here I am going to demonstrate some examples for concatenation and multiplication of tuples. So, we have a tuple called fruits what we have already created with elements apple, banana, cherry, plums, pineapple that is 5 items and we have another tuple by the name vegetables with, with again 5 items namely brinjal, tomato, potato, beans and carrot. Now, I want to create a new tuple called veg fruits, veg underscore fruits. So, I say veg underscore fruits is equal to fruits plus operator and vegetables. So, I, I actually symbolically add the fruits tuple to the vegetable tuples that results in concatenation and I print the veg fruits, a new tuple that is formed out, formed out of this addition or concatenation. So, you observe the output, you get the output as now the elements of the fruits tuple first that is apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple followed by the elements of the vegetable tuples namely brinjal, tomato, potato, beans and carrot. So, all elements put together. So, totally this veg fruits tuple has 10 elements. Okay. Now, coming to the multiplication of tuples, here I want to multiply the fruits tuple by 2. So, I create a new tuple by the name twice fruits which is equal to I say twice fruits is equal to fruits star 2 that asterisk the multiplication operator. Now, I try to print out twice fruits, print twice fruits. So, what I get the what I get at the output? observe that the elements of the fruit tuple have been doubled because I have multiplied by 2. So, now you see the output is apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple. So, this is the original elements of the fruit tuple followed by another set of the same elements. Again, I have apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple. So, this is, this is how I multiply the elements of a tuple using the asterisk operator. Now, let us discuss the import, importance of functions that we can use on tuples. Like with strings and lists, we can calculate the length of a tuple by using the len function, where, the, where we pass the tuple as a parameter as shown in the figure. Similarly, we can also use the max and the min functions on tuples. So, in this slide, we have taken, we have used the function len, len, which is used to find the length of the tuple, that is the number of elements of the tuple. For example, here we use the same tuple what we have been using so far, the fruits tuple. Now, here the fruits tuple has again 5 elements, apple, banana, cherry, plums and pineapple. Now, I say print len of len and I pass the fruits tuple as parameter to the len function and I try to print it. Now, what is the output? The output is 5. Yes, there are 5 elements, the length of the tuple, that number of elements in the tuple. Now, coming to the demonstration of max and min functions. So, I create a new tuple. So, this time I create a new tuple called price and I put 5 values in it. The first element is 100.2, second is 10.4, third is 300.35, then 6.5, then 500.75. So, I have put some floating values into the price tuple. Now, I say print max of price. I call the function max pass price as the parameter, price is the price tuple. Now, you see which is the maximum value of the maximum value which exists in the price tuple. 
yes it is 500.75 that is the output that is the maximum value that is the max value of the price tuple. Now similarly when I say print min m i n of price what is the minimum value yes 6.50 so that is printed as output. Now you may be wondering why we need a tuple when we already have a list or in other words how tuples differ from list. Primarily the way in which tuples are different from list is that they cannot be modified. This means that no items can be added to or removed from tuples and items cannot be replaced within tuples. You can however concatenate two or more tuples to form another new tuple. Let us see an example in the figure. In this figure I have demonstrated how actually the program behaves when you try to update an element in a tuple. So, here you see that we are creating a tuple by the name fruits we have taken the same fruits tuple uh, the elements I have put four elements are there in this fruits tuple apple, banana, orange and pineapple and I see I try to change the element or replace the element at the 0th index that is the first element I want to change or replace with peer. Now I have apple instead of apple I want to put peer. Now I say fruits of 0 equal to peer then I try to print the fruits tuple. So what do you get as the output? You see the output you get an error. So, you, you get a message saying that it is a type error which says tuple object does not support item assignment. This is because tuples cannot be modified. However, if we would wish to modify or change the content of a tuple, we may choose to convert the tuple to a list. We may do so using the list constructor that we pass and pass the tuple as an argument. Please observe the figure carefully. So, in this uh, figure I have, I, have I have demonstrated how you can convert a tuple to a list. So, first line you create a tuple by the name fruits, fruits equal to apple, banana, grapes, orange. Then I pass this tuple fruits to a list method that list is actually the constructor for uh, constructing a list, list of fruits now which returns a list L. Now I simply say L of 0 equal to plums. Remember that this fruits which is which was a tuple has now been converted to a list by the name L. Now here I try to assign plums to replace the apple in 0th index I say L of 0 equal to plums and I try to print L. Now you see the output now the apple is replaced by plums and you have the output as plums as the first element and the rest of the elements are unchanged banana, grapes and orange. Now that we have come to the end of this module let us have a quick recap of what we have discussed about tuple. The tuple data type is a sequence data type that cannot be modified which offers optimization to your programs by being a somewhat faster type than list for python to process. When other developers collaborate with your code use of tuples will convey to them that you do not intend for those sequences of values to be modified. In this module we covered the basic features of tuples including indexing, slicing and concatenation of tuples and showing some built in functions. Thank you see you in the next module.